Faz back again straight after the Lionesses performance um, versus Haiti. Um, yeah, let's kick off with that. I think let's dig straight into it. What, what's your thoughts on it? Mm, honest thoughts, Earth. Come on, you've watched it, right? It was a poor performance, <laughs> in my opinion. Um, I think I don't know whether Haiti were better than what we thought. I don't mm -hmm. know whether England uh, underestimated Haiti or it was just an off day for us in terms of our performance. Um, one of the three, but we just we just didn't look good. We just didn't look like there looks like it looks a bit flat. It looks like there's something missing. You know the energy I got from like mm. the Euros, and and I know people will say you know we had a bad start in the Euros against Austria. I agree, we did. So against yeah. Austria, we didn't play well. We got a one nil win, but you felt something watching them play. You felt like there was something going on. But today, fine. it just felt flat. I think just on that, like you, you had that worry as well, wasn't it? When we spoke about it last week, in terms of like it hadn't scored that many goals, like the the team playing together and them having to sort of rebuild, and we kind of lent more towards actually the quality of players should be good enough to sort of get them over the line. And I'm not too sure if it is that actually they underestimated Haiti because I think Haiti is a decent team. We've seen sort of their players in and around Europe, so we know they can play football. Um, I just think we just expected England to be a lot more dominant in terms of what they do on the ball and, and how they play. Um, and a, a funny thing about it, remember we were talking about my player in the um, tournament and I said a goalkeeper and you were laughing at me. I, I know, think the I goalkeeper's know, I performances... I think even across the tournament, but definitely in this game, were the sort of make or break in terms of uh, getting those three points. Yeah, well, look at Mary. Uh, she's pulled off two unbelievable saves. One, people would say is a standard goalkeeper save, but I think the dip and, and the pace that he come at her and she had to palm mm -hmm. it away. She had that one. She had the one-on-one -on -one down at, you know, the foot that she saved. Big moment, 81st minute. Yeah. And then and then she had the one from a, from a corner that was bending in and she got a big punch that cleared the box. So, she had a big performance for us. And for me, I just felt in our attack, I, I felt like our wide players didn't get past the fullbacks. It, you know, they struggled to beat the fullback in wide areas. And obviously, mm -hmm. you know, for our strikers, it's all the debate about who plays Russo or, or Daly. Let's forget Russo or Daly. If we ain't mm -hmm. getting the deliveries into them anyway, they're not going to score goals. And I felt today, you know, people can criticise and people can say Russo or Daly. And that, that, that will still go on because we only scored one goal from a set piece. That wasn't the problem. The problem yeah. wasn't number nine. The problem was the deliveries and entries with quality into that. Yeah. Um, and that was frustrating. I felt like in terms of our substitutions, I think we could have made more. Um, I thought they were, weren't great substitutions. I thought Lauren James, when she come on, she calmed the play down. You, you just saw the composure. As soon as she was on the ball, you just saw yeah. the team kind of relax around her. Um, obviously, she was an, an obvious miss from the starting eleven. Um, one of our, you know, I certainly thought would start in that team to be that, you know, the one that links the play in and around the box and, and creates and opens up, you know, back lines wasn't to be. She come on as a sub, but I felt she played well with when she come on. Yeah, I think she did. She she made it. She kind of helped sort of shift players across and and change the shape slightly. I think we talked about it before the tournament in terms of teams would be prepared in terms of what the lionesses do. And for me, there wasn't much different there wasn't no surprises it was as predictable I think Haiti was able to sort of keep the ball in front of them um, and just kind of shift across the pitch and there wasn't too much threats in terms of in and behind and when you're looking at the one-on-one -on -one plays I think for, for those Haiti players they would have felt confident in terms of these are the European championships putting myself up against them test myself against the best they're going to have been playing their best game like the concentration would have been 110%. So for me, there had to have been something different. Yes, the consistency in terms of the way England play is good and it's growing as a team and it, it allows us to be one of the favourites in the tournament. But I think it was just so predictable. Like there was nothing wow. new. There was nothing exciting. It was everything that everyone tactically would have been preparing for. So I'm thinking... What what happens? Where do we go from here in terms of like next game? Because do we keep do we keep it the same? We've been saying, haven't we? Like we've been saying, who's going to be the player that creates something out of nothing? Because these are the players that we need in our team. These are the players that are going to win us games. Moments wins game for us. Obviously, the, the the penalty. You know, we were lucky with the retake. Of course, the goalkeeper was off her line, so we we got lucky with that. But I be like I believe the last what three, four, five international fixtures, friendly fixtures. Serena's been playing with the team. She's been looking at different players, different variations, different types of formations or ways in which we can play and adapt within those formations. And then it comes to the first World Cup game, opening game, 
and we've gone back to completely to type. And I mean type mm. by what we saw in the Euros, uh, you, you know, the same 4-3-3 three, three with a whole one one holding midfielder, Kira Walsh, when she's man-marked out of the game, who else is going to come and help her alongside her to free her up? How does she find a way into the game? And then we had Tooney and uh, Stanway in advance of that with our, with, with our front three, but it was so predictable. It was so obvious. Our passes that we played were so shaped up and you could read them. They could mm. read them. Haiti could read every pass. The fullback anticipated every ball into wide areas. Yeah. And then one v we talk about 1v1 duels. I thought the Haiti fullbacks were, were really, really good with that. Dealt with it really well. I felt sorry for Russo at times in terms of, I felt like she could have done better with her footwork before some of the deliveries 100%. that came in. I think like yeah. she was always backpedaling to then, to, to then get some uh, leverage on her header. So she was mm. only... She was never balanced, never coming onto a header that she could hit towards goal. But also the deliveries into the box. I thought they were poor. I thought they were floated. They were, like Everything was in the air, air. Nothing wrapped in. No pace on them. And I'm just thinking, I'm comparing it to the Japan game that I just did. I was you know, about to say. Before that, Japan were phenomenal. <laughs> deliveries into the box that beat the back line. The pace that it. went in on them. Conviction, tidiness, preciseness. We didn't have that. Yes, that's exactly my thoughts. I was thinking, like, we haven't even got them facing their own goal. It was, everything, was just, everything was just too slow, like, in terms of taking an extra touch, them yeah. being able to set. Actually, you need them backpedaling, you need them having to react. Like, that is what we were missing in terms of the England players. And I think, for me, it's a little bit frustrate, frustrating because I know that we've got the quality to do that in terms of getting the ball, pulling it in the box, and then getting the strikers or the, the midfielders that are running on to come on and, and do something. And, and we just never had that. And for me... It makes me think, I don't know if it's a risk, but do you change it? Do you put people like Robinson on? Do you say, mm. Beth England, go in and, and get me a goal? Do you, do you have to shake it up completely or do you still stick to your guns tactically and say, we just we do what we do, we'll keep doing it? Because I'm not too sure how long that will last in, in this World Cup. I'm laughing at you, Earth, because you already know that Serena ain't changing what Serena does. Serena being what she always does. So she's done it you know back-to-back -back tournaments with, with the Netherlands and it looks as if mm. she's doing it back-to-back -back tournaments with with the Lionesses which is fine and, and, and I do believe it's a you know it's what she trusts and it's what she knows. Faz are we just spoilt now obviously we're European championships uh, we want good performances we want to see the silky football obviously we're one of the favourites in the tournament are, are we ex are we expecting too much like what are are we just getting too ahead of ourselves or is it just tournament football get your three points and just work on each game as it comes it is tournament football and so obviously like the player in me is saying to me or the coach in you is saying yep actually you know normally opening games are ugly you know it's more about getting the three points and, and get off to a good start mm -hmm. but expectations always going to be there well, as you mentioned there we are European champions right we've gone we went on an unbeaten you know you know streak of what I think it's 23 24 games yeah. as a squad and so now we are playing with that expectation and those extra added pressures of being European champions. Now, is that added pressure with a depleted squad too much for us? It, it felt a little bit like that. It felt like it wasn't. we didn't really have, and I know we've lost experienced players. So it just felt like we had no one in the game that was able to just take control of the game and settle it and dictate the rhythm, dictate the play. There was just no one doing that. No one took that control. Um, but th there is expectation. Of course, there is. Yeah. I, I get it. We, we, can't, we, we can't. We can't have anything less Earth. Like, really, do you think like we should be going beating Haiti comfortably? Yeah. No, we sh comfortably. Yeah, you, and you predicted they'll win four nil. So that's a, a comfortable win. But so you know, I'm mad, yeah, because I normally get it uh, uh, close. To <laughs> I know you. I know you're fuming about that. That's why I definitely yeah. had to mention it. Um, and you mentioned though a depleted squad. So. Does that mean, for example, obviously we had the players that's retired and come out of the, uh, the game, but those two or three injuries, does does that make or break a squad? Does that have an impact in terms of, as a country, we've made so much progress and we, we talk about how far the games come. If we lose three players out of a squad and it all goes, the expectation You're in terms say of how up. I was going to say it all goes tits up. I was going to say. <laughs> I was going to say what I was going to say. Um, in terms of like, it just shift. It just rocks the boat so much. Like realistically, where are we? And I say that with my Spain hat on. In terms of they lose twenty five oh. players mm -hmm. and still can go to a tournament mm -hmm. and still play good football with even if it's youngsters or whatever still be at a certain quality and level and excitement like so where are we really like like what what are we really doing in terms of a, a national team 
That's what I'm saying. Good question. Uh, these are the questions that are going to be asked, right? Because people are mm. going to be commenting about the game. Of course, everybody, what you're going to read, the headlines are going to be like, you know, England won. Does that is that more than the, the actual performance? Right now, of course it is. And if we progress and go on to win it, then no one will be talking about this game against Haiti. But you're right. You know, Spain have a, a depleted squad. You know, the, the the US are coming into the tournament with 14 debutants. Mm. So when you think of like the, the, these big nations, like you look at France, they've got they've got a depleted squad in terms of some of the injuries they've picked up and players that have had to go home from their squad. So when you look at it like that, where actually are we? Because where are, you know, who is Frank Kirby's replacement? Mm. like who has come like I, I don't know who has come in who, who are you looking at that's taking Beth Mead's place you know where is Leah Williamson's replacement in terms of the like for like and, and having the same or similar close impact as they, they, those three players have I don't know so, so what the players you know, I look at our squad the problem is that if I look at our squad I've been saying it for ages it's not about it's not about being negative it's about being realistic and actually seeing where they are you know we've all watched the, 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 the games that they've played of, of late even, mm. the, even the games when they've won since the Euros and how they've won him. The squad depth isn't where it was, you know, in the Euros, for example, because we had good good yeah. balance in terms of, you know, experienced players that had, had been there and done it, and then obviously good uh, opportunities for young players to come and, you know, play with that freedom that we saw that they did. But now those players that, as you said, a year on from tournament football, now they're, they're, they're expected to be our, our more established players or senior players and this, in a tournament, and which is a first. Yeah. And this is my point. Like, where do the players now go from here? Like, we talked about preparations and stuff. Like, tactically, Serena would have done what she needed to do, the coaching staff. In terms of the players who need to go onto that pitch and deliver, like, what what are they now thinking? What are they now doing? Because I know in terms of, like, when we played, it was just football focus. We all wanted to make sure, first and foremost, we've done our jobs and done the things that we need to do right. And then we take it on from there. But what... What does, this, what does this type of current player now go into the game with? We saw the issues in around um, letters written to the FA and stuff that's happening off the pitch. And th there's so much other stuff outside of football. Like, what I don't want it to do is to be an excuse. Like, mm -hmm. if we're good enough to go on and win the tournament, then we're good enough, we go and do what we do. But if we're not and we fall short, it can't be because of these other business type things off the pitch. And I think for me as a player, like what does, what does that piece look like? Performance mm. versus all the other noise, all the exactly. other stuff that's happening around the game. Yeah. That, the, the, the thing is, and, and uh, as you said there about Spain, there's obviously that noise around the Spanish team and around their players, etc. But I can only go off my experiences. When I think back to 2013 Euros, we went into that tournament and, and and we can talk about different generations and we can talk about where the game is at now and how professional it is and how bigger the money pot is to, to, to pick from or prize money is, mm. et cetera, et cetera. Right? But we were given as players responsibility to kind of argue what we felt, you know, the prize, how the prize money in terms of um, coming out of the group, how much you get last 16, whatever, quarterfinals, et cetera. And we spoke about that for the first time in 2013. Let me tell you that at the time, we probably didn't realise the effect it was having on us. We got knocked out of the group stages. And I'm talking with a talented, you know, in, in terms of there was some young players in that tournament. We had the likes of Lucy Bonds making her first tournament, Jordan Nobbs at the time, Tony Duggan. We had some really good young players, balanced with some experienced players, right? We mm -hmm. got knocked out of the group. Let me tell you, I don't remember there being a day building into our first game of that tournament where we didn't have a discussion, a team meeting, without staff around how the prize money should go. So we didn't park it. Gosh. It was never parked. Once the tournament started, it was parked, right? It's only three days ago, whatever it was, that it come out about, you know, the Lionesses, the open letter that they wrote about, about the pay, and they said mm. they parked it. Whether you have parked it as a player, there's noise around that. So we're all talking mm. about it. We're here now talking about, you know, yeah. why, have they, why have they come out of it now? There'll be other outlets, there'll be other, you know, journalists, whatever, media, broadcasters, whatever, be talking about this subject, yeah. right? So now the, line, the light is on that. Everybody's thinking about that and talking about that, that particular thing. So whether the lionesses think they've parked it, they ain't going to hide it. They're not going to get away from somebody trying to creep a question in around that and them having yeah. to avoid it and pretend that they don't know what's going on. So that's a distraction, in my opinion. right? Whether that meant that was a distraction for the day or not, I don't know. Mm. But it is a distraction. Mary Earps, the shirt with the goalkeeper. Yeah. You know, Nike not doing the, the lioness goalkeeper shirt. Why have they not got it there? And Mary Earps yeah. really disappointed with that. Of course she's disappointed. But on the eve of, a, a, of your first World Cup game, is that the right timing for it to come out? Who knows? She had a brilliant I, game, Earth. Yeah, but, and I think 
And just just to add to that, and I think this is the bit that frustrates me because we talk about the women's game being different from the men's game and like how it's more sort of family orientated. Like the thing that I that kind of is the thread in terms of women's football is we do it because we love it. Obviously, looking at where it's pro now, do we? No, but I'm trying to say. we did. We did. Okay, we did. did. No, you but you. I, I can hear you saying do, and there's a did on no, the no. do. No, I'm, mm. I'm, I'm acting like I've still yeah, got my okay. Astros on. That's yeah, why. Okay, course, um, right. So this is this is my frustration in terms of we have to keep that bit front and centre. Like the important thing as well as the game builds is making sure that we have those people around us that we can trust to do those other pieces in terms of the business piece, but also obviously upskilling as a footballer in terms of like business and stuff in society mm. but how do we ensure that we just play the game because we love the game and like we talk about it domestically about how even the younger players have so much more expectation and everything's given to them like by that progress happening I think we then lose I, I tell me if I'm wrong I just in my opinion we then lose that just national passion to just play football and play well and I think it's like you said, it's creeping into the top level of our game in terms of, yes, we talked about players transitioning out. So therefore you've got a lot less of those old school players that are still in the squad, which means we're getting more of the younger talent who these things are an expectation because that's what they've grown up knowing and having like the option of doing. But for me, it just loses that grit and that passion. I think the further we go in the tournament, there are going to be those teams, hate is an example where they've never had it that mm-hmm. they're just playing because they're just playing because they love the game and they want to get better and better. And they're on a platform where potentially it could be a life changing opportunity in terms of joining another club and football is front and center. Mm-hmm. And I think when you get to this is, I think that's what's frustrating me in terms of the the performance. Cause I'm looking at it more than just what we've done mm-hmm. today. There's just too much noise around just playing football. Mm, like mm. how do you how do you bring it back and because they've got all the resources they've got all the tactics oh, they've got everything stuff. they have everything they've got everything like we got the game you done earlier with um in the japan game mm. i don't even the resources i was just like it's oh, but, 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 the the i was looking at i was thinking yeah. some of these need sports bras you talked about people slipping over and you mm. mentioned when you was doing comms around changing their boots i'm thinking mm. do they have other boots mm, probably not like these are all things like there's mm. everything that these England players possibly need, they have. And sometimes I feel like I'm I'm con- constantly bashing them, but I think I just have such a high expectation in terms of we mm. see the talent week in, week out. They've got to go out there and perform. Mm. And, and that's what I'm disappointed. Not in terms of expectations, European Championship, blah, blah, blah. Go and play football. Go yeah. and play good football. Mm. And they've just never done that. I think that's what frustrated me today. Yeah, the fact. Uh, yeah, I think that was it. The frustration, and as you say, when you underperform in a game, and look, we we, we can go back to the first opening game against Austria. When you go back to that, mm. I think we'll all be talking about the noise that come around that. So no one spoke about. Let, let's look back to Austria, right? In, in the Euros, mm. right? We were poor in that opening game, and we won one nil. Nobody spoke about anything other than no one spoke about the poor performance. Everybody spoke about the three points. Now, because the talking that's been going on, people aren't just talking about we've progressed with, a, with, with three points and a one nil. We're talking about, well, was that because of X, Y, and Z? Mm. So now you're giving reason, you're giving people reason to have these assumptions of what might be going on. And of course, the Lioness is going to have to be strong knit team going through these the, the World Cup now, and and acting and putting on his face and speaking like they're not bothered by it. The mm. Americans, we've seen it, you know, the US over the years, we've seen it. They're going to tournaments. You know, they're fighting with the president and whatever before, you, you know, in tournament, they're, they're key players. But they've done this for many of years. They mm-hmm. fought for many years with those pressures and played at the same time. We've never done that. Yeah. We've never done that. So we're, we're, we're touching new territory in doing that. And the pressures that come with that, what you're asking for, we better deliver on that front. The US have been able to do that. You know, the whole the whole thing with uh, Megan Rapino in, in, in a World Cup 2019, she delivered. She yeah. went and won in the World Cup. So she can go to the White House and put her fingers up at them. But we're not delivering with... Of our, our off-field speeches at the minute, and this is one game, but we haven't won in three, or we haven't scored in three. Yeah. So prior okay. to this this game today, and and, and as you say, it was a, a set piece that we scored from today, and we didn't look like scoring outside of that. So fans' question at esp underscore fdn is: Has Daly played her way out of the starting eleven? <laughs> her success uh, as a striker means 
She's lost her place at left back and now she's a sub. Has she played her way out of the out of the team? She's too good. Mm, no, I don't think she can play her way out of the team. Not, certainly not as a striker, given the season she's had at Aston Villa. Um, golden boot. You know what's interesting for me, Earth, is that I think Rachel Daly, if she wasn't to, if Serena said that you ain't going to start as a number nine, I'm telling you now, Rachel Daly would be more than happy to play left back, like she did in the Euros. So why haven't we considered that? Is that just because she's been an out and out strike all season and Serena no longer sees her as a full back? Because I can assure you, Rachel Daly would have rather played left back today than sat on that bench. 100%. And then that would then that would obviously allow for then Alex Greenwood to come more central and obviously daily at left back. So I don't think you can play your way out of a team that aren't performing. You know, it's not the number nine. We're so reliant on, we were like, you know, both Russo and Daly had, mm -hmm. you know, really good seasons. And the whole conversation has been solely about those two. It's not about yeah. those two. You know, those two were part of the last squad. It's not about those two. So there's other areas of the pitch that we aren't performing in. What's, your, think, th what's your thoughts? Do you think, I was just thinking that, do you think Serena knows that in terms of, how attacking and aggressive she maybe wants the front line to be. They're not quite there yet. So actually kind of shoring up the the defensive side of things because obviously Bright and Carter would have some sort of relationship of playing together. So actually sticking them in we the centre-back position. Though, eh? Pardon? Right? We were loose today defensively. Yeah, but Bright Bright hasn't played since. When's the last time she played? May, something like that? She's been out for, yeah, for a long time. time. So mm. she's going to be rusty. And, and again, this is the thing. Because you're yeah. captain, do you, do you have to start? Is there someone else who's who's been who's got more minutes under their legs that actually should have been I just given that she opportunity? Should have been looking, at her. Been looking at her. The, the lack of experience in that back line, other than Lucy. You know, Jess Carr hasn't played tournament football. Alex Greenwood hasn't been a, a regular starter in tournament football before. So, as much as they are at club level, I think Millie Bright and Lucy are the only two in our back line that have played regular tournament football at the top level. And, and that's why we every other defender it. hasn't. Hence, why I say that is daily an option at fullback. Yeah, and, and our discussions in the lead up to the World Cup, where we talked about does Steph come back in? Do we? Need if you ask me, my strongest team, right? Daily would have been at left back. Mm. And I don't know and she Alex, likes Alex to play up front, mm. but I want every like I'm looking at the I'm looking at the Netherlands team. Earth, they get every player with the qualities available on the pitch. They fit them in somewhere. Yeah. Rachel Daly is an option at left back, and I thought she had a, a phenomenal um, Euros at left back. Why, why, why change that? You you sound like you want Serena to take on futsal tactics where you just have all your Rotational good players. players. <laughs> yeah. do, it. do it. I told do you, it. attack is the, is the first line of defence. So mm. yeah, it. we'll, it. we'll see it. what happens next game. I don't think there'll be too many changes as we as we mentioned. Mm. But thank you for that question. Esp underscore fdn. Thanks for joining us on this week's reactional episode of Boots, Balls and Bras. Um, the Lionesses have got their three points. Uh, the tournament has started off with a bang and a few penalty kicks. Um, and I'm sure we're going to be reacting to more goals, uh, more VAR um, responses from referees and officials. And, oh my gosh, Farah, I just remembered the yellow card. The Mate, goalkeeper. I can't even. I'm the goalkeeper. Confused. We I need can't to, even. We need to get we need to get some yeah. official um feedback on that before the next um yeah. podcast because that was that was muddling my brain. So looking forward to the next Lioness game on Friday. Um yeah. hopefully our performances get better. Right now I'm continue to be fueled. Thank you, MS. Have you yeah, got your snacks? Same, same, looks like. Cheers. Mm -hmm. Um, we will see you next week. End of the week. Adios. Ciao. Adios. Ciao. Bye.